The B-movie gore fest reaches its climactic conclusion when Agent Smith stumbles upon an antidote to the alien infection that makes Luis very happy. We're going to talk about Skeeter's number four from Mad Cave Studios. See you in three. And welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Skeeter's number four. Before we get started, please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that bell for notification. Your attention is greatly appreciated and stay tuned to the end for the score. Let's talk about the credits. Skeeter's number four is written by Kevin Cuff and Bob France. Art by Kelly Williams, who also did the colors and the cover. And lettering is done by Chaz Pangburn. Let's talk about what happened in the last issue. So we, the entire town during their uh, summer festival is infested and swarmed over by these alien mosquito type uh, creatures that whoever they uh, bite or uh, pinch or stab, if you will, with their proboscis uh, turns into a form of the alien. It's very, it's very uh, mutant-like. And so the, over, the entire town is overrun. Luis, Carla, JJ, and Agent Smith do their best to, to destroy all the mosquitoes that they can. But right before they get overwhelmed, all the mutant alien mosquitoes up and they head back to the re secret research facility and where we find that a queen has emerged from the cocoon that they were originally studying. And now this queen is sentient, she knows what she wants and in, in effect she wants to take over the world. So this swarm is a precursor to an alien invasion. That's where we left off. Now we, now we here we are in the finale, which is Skeeter's number four. And what happens? Carla, Luis, JJ, and Agent Smith head to the secret research facility to try and find out the source of the uh, alien swarm, try to cut it off, try to destroy it, and try to keep them trapped within the facility. They're running down hallways, and they're trying all kinds of things to try and slow the swarms that are chasing them down. Carla comes up with a brilliant idea by, to, by using a wall-mounted defibrillator to toss it down into a wet... Um, wet puddled hallway to kind of zap a bunch of them and they're shooting and they're with all the guns that they have and eventually they get to a small room where they can stop and reassess where they are with closed doors. Agent Smith re recognizes that Luis, who got bit several hours ago, hasn't mutated. He hasn't turned. So he grabs him, takes a, a blood sample, and what does he find out? Of course, this is where things get a little comedic, which shouldn't be a surprise, but that if totally it fits right in with the story. We learn that Luis hasn't turned because his blood is saturated with THC, weed, right? He's been smoking marijuana a lot. He's still pretty stoned. And it turns out that that amount of THC in the blood is what is keeping the alien infection from, it kills the alien infection within the bloodstream. Ah, so now we have an antidote, but how do we make do? How do we, how do we use that information? Of course, <laughs> the story turns out exactly uh, as you might expect, or maybe you don't expect it, but at the very least, it, it, it's par for the course. The funding for the research facility is a joint venture between a Chinese uh, capitalist and the next NBA star, and they go into a large section of the facility that Agent Smith is aware of that is a large warehouse storage area. And it turns out one of the things they were doing in that research facility was breeding, of course, super weed. They were, <laughs> they were breeding marijuana with extremely high levels of THC. And so, therefore, the solution presents itself. If they can get all the bugs in the warehouse area, seal it off, and then set the super weed uh, on fire, the smoke will kill them all. And so, there's the plan. Uh, the Agent Smith heads down to the control room so he can activate the doors that would seal off the warehouse once the bugs are lured in. Uh, Carla, JJ, and Luis stay behind, and they try and and try and coax the all the aliens alien mosquito bug things into the room meanwhile the queen who's been watching this whole thing uh, come about she says okay i'm not going to let these guys stop my alien invasion and she's sentient she can talk she can think and reason she heads down to the warehouse area and she's going to put a stop to this uh, human uh, uh, obstacle to her invasion plans so she heads down to the warehouse and now we have a, th a three humans on one alien queen fight there's a bunch of uh, stabbing and shooting and throwing of torches and all kinds of things that are happening in the big melee and the chaos of trying to defeat this queen. And what happens? Luis gets stabbed right through the middle uh, by one of the queen's large 
spear-like appendages. But uh, recognizing that they, they've got to slow her down and got to stop her swarm from coming in, uh, Agent Smith lights the superweed on fire and traps them all in the room. Uh, I'm sorry, J not Agent Smith. Uh, JJ lights the superweed on fire and smokes out the room, and that slows the queen down. And long enough for Carla and JJ to get an end around on it and kill the queen. They try to get Luis out, but he's too badly injured. And he said, just leave me be. Uh, I'm going to try and, and distract all the rest of the remaining swarm in and get them in the room so we can seal it off. And you guys escape because there's no way I'm going to make it out alive. And so we have some sweet, tender, hugging moments between JJ and Luis and, and Carla. And then they recognize their stoner friend is making the ultimate, ultimate sacrifice. They escape out. And they meet up with Agent Smith in the parking lot and the whole facility goes up in smoke and flames and super weed uh, <laughs> fumes. And there's the end. So at the, as, as a prelude, or I should say as an epilogue, uh, Agent Smith already confirms that government agencies are coming in to cover it all up. Uh, Carla takes it upon herself to recognize this is an opportunity to rebuild the town and make it better so it's not quite so sleepy and uh, dead. And... Then we head off, but there's a little bit of a, a, a question mark at the end when we find out that maybe not all those mosquito mutant monsters were trapped inside the facility. And there we have it. That's the end of the Skeeters media series and, and the end of this issue. What do we like about Skeeters number four? If you, if you like gore fest, B-movie, action, adventure, twists, turns, nothing but characters doing going all out to beat the monsters and maybe have a little bit of a sense of humor at the same time this is it this was a perfect b-movie romp if you if you like the, the the story that if you like the stories where that go all out with the gore and the monsters and the action but there's a little hint of humors letting you know that they they're taking what they're they're taking the storytelling seriously, but maybe they're at, they're okay with maybe not taking the tone 100% seriously. But it's okay to laugh a little bit. It's okay maybe, maybe to poke fun a little bit. Um, this is this is right up your alley. I mean, this is like every trauma movie you can think of. Everything from uh, and and even movies that aren't trauma but in that same vein, like the stuff and uh, Chud and uh, Toxic Adventure and. All, all those different kinds of movies, especially, especially during that came out during the like seven, late 70s, 80s, into the early 90s. If that's your cup of tea, this is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. What didn't we like about Skeeters number four? Uh, honestly, nothing that was besides a major, minor, I would say not even major, a minor nitpick or two. This is the kind of, it knows what it wants to be. It knows the kind of story it's trying to tell. And it leans into it 100%. This is... Uh, everybody giving their all, but knowing that they're here to have fun and to make sure that you have fun along with it. Now, some horror purists may say, "Well, it's it's not it's not serious enough. It's not taking it's it's being it's uh, being campy and goofy and everything else." Well, but that's the point. It, it's intended to be campy and goofy, and it knows it. And this and the storytellers are saying, "This is the kind of story we want to tell," and the sincerity is there 100. So, aside from a few minor nitpicks with. Um, some of the choreography maybe doesn't quite work out. Maybe some of the timing doesn't quite work out. Maybe the, uh, you know, just, you know, the little factual pieces that make the story go. You can pick a few nits here and there, but otherwise speaking, otherwise those are just minor, minor nitpicks. And if you accept the story for what it is, you're going to have a good time. So let's talk about Kelly Williams, Kelly Williams and the art. Uh, Big, gory, lumpy, disgusting, grody, gross monsters is, is exactly what you want out of this story. And that's what you get. There's plenty of uh, limbs getting chopped off, heads getting chopped off, flames, people running in all directions. It's just chaos, chaos mayhem, havoc, and all the things in between. So Kelly Williams, exactly along with the writers, Kevin Cuff and Bob France, gives you exactly what you're looking for. Um, so is it the cleanest, pr most perfect, pristine art in the world? No. It, but is that the point? No. This is exactly what it's meant to be. Final thoughts. What do we think about Skeeters number four from Mad Cave Studios? It's campy, gory, B-movie, fun from start to finish. It doesn't take itself too, too seriously, but it's all, but it, but they 
take the act of entertaining you seriously. And that's exactly what you want out of a story of this sort. Therefore, we're going to give Skeeters number four from Mad Cave Studios, the f grand finale of this miniseries, a nine out of ten. And I think that's fair. But what do you think? Do you like B-movies? Do you like trauma films? Do you like campy films? Do you like these type of films that are plenty of gore and violence, but with a little bit of a sense of humor at the same time? Let us know in the comments section. And if you like comic reviews, please stay tuned through the outro for the next one.